I think it's fair to say that we all we all need a little bit of a distraction right now. So I am distracting myself by mapping. I am going to be colouring the Castle Keeper's Guide. We are on the fourth panel and we got really close last night and I want to work on that a little bit because we can finish it. And then tomorrow I'm going to work on Necropolis. And then weekend I'm going to work on Necropolis. But tonight, let's finish that fourth panel. Before we get into this, let's give a big huge shout out to you Twitch subscribers and you Patreon backers. So much love from me to you. Uh, you, you literally do. Uh, you empower me. Your support is palpable. You uh, you enable me to go off and get software, get hardware, get the 50-50 nasty tasting beans. You, uh, you know, honestly, you, especially in a world like this, it's me right here. So thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being a supporter. It was really, really, really appreciated. So, without further ado, let's get ourselves into the Castle Keeper's Guide itself. And this is our Martin Bailey Castle. We've still got some texturing to do, some shadowing to do, some highlighting to do. And I want to actually pull back on some of the grass uh, a, a little bit. I'm going to get a little bit more stone in there, I think. So it's a little bit more... Yeah, a little bit like that. This is good. It doesn't feel oversaturated, but I just want to tease it back just a little bit. So that's what we're going to do tonight, is we're going to finish up the highlights, the lowlights, getting our extra detailing. I consider this to be two layers of colour. Sometimes I hit five. Um, we're not going to need that, but we're definitely going to add some. And if we've got time left in the stream, which we probably will, I might start working on this bad boy. Just for giggles. We'll see. We'll see. It's that or it's the uh, the village. I'm not sure which one I want to do. Let me move my drink into place. And let's find my pen, which apparently I just thrown down there all willy-nilly like let's get into this ah zen zen i feel the zen already okay I don't feel like this level of detailing that I'm doing here is necessary, by the way. But um, I do think that... Because, like, the print size is probably... Hmm, something like that. I, it's, it's probably something like that. But I think I think those little bits that we do... Like, even, you know... Okay, take the other side of the uh, chimney here. Add a little bit of shadow on the other side of the chimney. I think I think that actually helps. I think it does show through. So we're, we're going to do a little bit of love on this tonight. Just a little bit of love. Let's not make it too shabby. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's pretty quite white. Ah, whatever.
you know, that was probably an incorrect colour to do there, so let's just... Let's change that. There we go. Nice. Oh, I forgot I did this. I did like this little um, balcony walkway porch. I did a porch there. All right, let's paint that properly. That's much better. That's much better. All right, a little bit of shadowing here. Uh, you know what I actually want to do? Hold on. Let's get a like a wooden detail here. There we go. Now, let's do a little bit of shadowing. And I feel like this is too light, so I'm just going to throttle it back a little bit. one thing I wanted to do. I wanted to add smoke to the chimneys. You know what I'm actually going to do here? There we go. Reminder, I keep forgetting to do it. And I think it would look particularly effective on a, a 3D sort of view like this. Hey, Forge Master. Sorry, my friend didn't see you come in. Sounds like you have had a very productive time, my friend. I feel like I'm going to call on top of my ink here. I feel like I spluted some ink and I'm not quite sure when I did that. But let's fix this up right now. There we go. Having a grand time sorting stuff, weirdly fun to you. So many folders, is beautiful. So this is the SRD Compendium in Foundry. You know, I'm not going to knock you, my friend. I'm really not. I, I, I can kind of, I understand. I, I truly do. Now, is this going to be something that all of your group can then access? Or is this just for you? By the way, for someone that came into the chat, well, about two or three weeks ago, and you hadn't even got going playing with a group yet, you are full on, my friend. It's kind of cool. Like, you found a passion in life, and passions are important. Hobbies are important. And I'm really glad that you found something that is inspiring you so much.
Well, give me a Good to see you, my friend. You did say drink a Bailey's. I've got a Bailey's, a Kahlua, and a shot of brandy in here. So cheers to you. Forge Master, then what you're doing is not only useful, but it's noble what you've created there. That's fantastic. It really is. And wargaming with the shit that's going on in the country right now, I think you would be excused losing track of time or even days. Totally, totally, totally understandable, my friend. But why don't you just pull up a chair, get yourself some ice cream, and chill out on the Faden channel over here, because we're just going to be mellowing, okay? This is the mellow area, right here. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come up here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna paint the keep, and then I'm gonna come back down for no other reason than because I wanna. And today is all about just because I wanna. <laughs> yeah, the moo, right? <laughs> we need a moo about, we really do. Oh, you're gonna run the server, so you, you, you upped your memory. Okay, I got you. I got you. Blue sky, Blackbird, good to see you, good to see you, really good to see you, I like hanging out with my friends, I really do, today's been a shit day right, I think we all agreed, it's been a shit day, it's been a hard day, emotionally it's a hard day, but hanging out with you right now, I'm getting mellow. I'm getting mellow. You are my drug. You are all my drugs. So thank you so much for being here with me. I really mean that. I really do. <laughs> yeah, this thing. <laughs> yeah, and the, the guy I did it for hasn't been in since I actually put this little guy back there. So he's staying back there until Trebor shows up. Forge Master, just with everything going on in the capital, it's not. It might be a great day for you. I had a productive day at work. But it's not a great day for the country. It's a low day for the country. But that's all I'm going to say, because that's not what this channel is about. You sorted the SRD today, and you had a great day doing it. And honestly, that's... I mean... Maybe, maybe we concentrate a little bit on the things that have gone well, the things that are going well. And I'm going to contribute to that. I'm going to finish this panel. Even though I said I was going to draw the keep on the top of the mart, and I'm back down into the village below, I'm going to finish this panel tonight, and it's going to be effing glorious. There's something to be happy about. For me. And I'm surrounded by cats. I have a cat there... And I have another... Whoa, 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 whoa. Get out of the drink. Come on. Very interested, apparently, in my energy drink here. Forge Master, we're not going to talk about that. I'm going to politely disagree with you. We're not, we're not even going to get into that level of conversation, okay? I had a feeling you'd come out from that, at that angle, but we, we're just going to... We're, we're not going to talk about that. And we're not going to talk about it in chat. There are plenty of other places to do it. Right? All of us.
I give it a G, yeah? Wargaming, did you, um, did you stream today? Did you, like, play a game? Did you do, like, the, um, aquarium thing? Did I not do grey on here at all? No, I have a green showing through. I need to fix that. Oh, okay, okay. So Wednesdays, Wednesdays you don't. I gotcha, I gotcha. I will put that in the vault. Now, my vault is pretty shallow, and it, things tend to drop out pretty fast. But I will attempt to memorize that one. Well, wasn't studded leather armor in um, basic Dungeons and Dragons? I mean, I know it may not be a historical thing, but are you objecting on the grounds of history, or are you objecting on the grounds that you don't feel like it belongs in a fantasy game? Personally, I, I like the visual aspect of it. I kind of dig. Um, studded armor, even though it may not have an historical equivalent to it. I don't know what that is, Wargaming. They counseled Kailau. I don't know what that is. I don't know how to pronounce it, and I don't know what it is, and I don't know why we would be happy that it got counseled. But apart from that, yay, they cancelled something. Is that a sport? What is it? Oh, a, ki a kid show. Hey, Marlin Skills here. Yeah, yeah. So, what's so bad about it? Why would we celebrate it being cancelled? I want answers. I don't think I need to over-engineer these much more. I think these are looking pretty good. Yeah, I think I think they're fine. I think they're fine. Let's go. Let's go to the top of the martyr. A terrible kid show. One of the worst things to come from Canada. Animated kid in it is actively putting his animated kid sister into mortal peril over and over and nothing ever happens to him. Indeed. Caillou. Caillou. Thank you. I never would have got that. I'm going to be really honest with you all, by the way. I am shit at pronouncing things. Um, I'm going to blame me being English, but also... Um, we never really studied, studied foreign, foreign, whoa, foreign languages, because I'm English. Um, it just wasn't a thing. So I never had this upbringing of studying, like, foreign languages, foreign pronunciations. You know, this letter is actually pronounced this way in this language. 
none of that. So I am terrible at it. I am very phonetic. Very phonetic. And the closest I've ever been to actually understanding how things are pro properly pronounced was when I studied ancient Latin. And my love of Romans. I mean, you know, but... So I can understand it, but then I'm just... I'm crap. In the real world, I'm crap. Caillou. Caillou. I'm sorry that the, um, no, I'm not sorry, but I'm kind of amazed that the show is of that ilk, I suppose. It's kind of unfortunate. I'll have to do a little bit of study on that now. I'll have to try and understand what's going on there with that show. Now, did it get can Why did it get cancelled then? I'm not going to click the link in the middle of the stream. Why did it get cancelled? Was it general people objecting? Was it lack of general support? Like, it, no one was watching the darn thing? Am I on ink? I'm on my ink layer. I'm just going to roll with it. I'm going to roll it like it ain't no thing. I think we're getting there. Okay, keep it at the top. Keep it at the top. That's like three times I've said that and I keep drifting away. Caillou, Caillou. I successfully campaigned to get all trace of Caillou. Caillou. Banned and removed from my work. Interesting, okay. Brigandine I like. Brigandine, I, I know this conversation is bouncing all over. Brigandine I like. Uh, Brigandine and laminar armor. Absolutely. Ma you, 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 look, you're the Forge Master. But, yeah, so you're, you're probably going to go, ah, oh, shit, block. But one of my um, favourite armours from Dungeons & Dragons was actually Half Plate. I love the idea of Half Plate quite a bit. Caillou was on the air for 20 years. Wow, that had one hell of a running, huh? Yes, I should probably do that. I, I will do that now. So Forge Master, is it is it the fact that there's no historical precedent for it that bugs you the most? Or 
Or is it the fact that there's no historical precedent, but it almost feels like they're presenting it as if there is one? Yeah, the studded leather thing, yeah. Wondering why it bugs you so much. Well, not, you, no, you're not ranting against but you know what I mean? Like, for me, it, it, it just slid. You know, I could imagine it. It was like, oh, that's kind of cool. But it's the, it doesn't bug me, but clearly you're a little bit irked by it, so I'm just curious. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and lighten up this groundwork a little bit. And I'm trying to think in my head how I wanna do it. Ah, I get you. You're coming from a construction perspective, rivets getting slammed into you. Okay. Okay. No, I can dig that. I can dig that. That's an interesting perspective that I've not thought about. Okay. Yeah, okay. That's a little bit like boob armor, right? Boot plate, where you're literally channeling the uh, the blade into your sternum. So I get that. I, I, I can understand that. Well, Gibby Recon, you are indeed homing in. I'm actually amazed that Miss J has so many points. Okay, how do I want to do this? How do I want to do this? What brush do I want to assign to this? I'll tell you what I haven't done. I haven't actually just even lightened up this. So let's do this first. Well, no, that's not light. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. There we go. Let's, uh, let's get this done first. All right, cheers for it, Master. I look forward to watching that. All right, how do I want to do this? How do I want to do this? Let's take a look through my bushes here. lighten up my ground so do I do this with vegetation I could or do I do it with ground effects I'm thinking I do it with ground effects yeah 
Let's try these series of brushes right here. Let's try you. And let's do a localized test. I gotta right down in here. There we go. Something like this. Uh, they are favourites, um, darling. They are favourites. Oh, that is a big brush. Hold on a sec. So, like if I go to my basics here, that's my soft brush I like going to. That's my hard brush. Soft and hard, both with pen pressure. And my Happy HB. There's a little bit like a spray gun. Is it has some missing pixels behind it. Those are the first three right there. Everything else is lanyop, as they would say in Louisiana. And right here, I love these ground effects right here, even though I'm working some, um, with something different. They're literally just favorites. Photoshop doesn't normally allow you to do that. Brush box does. Why is Brush box not sponsoring me? I don't know. Right, so I'm kind of on a brown right here. This brush, this brush is definitely bouncing a little bit. Like that. Look, you see that? I don't like that. I don't like to bounce on the angle. Like, at all. So let's uh, let's not use that particular brush. That's why it was not favorited. Let's try this one. No, you see, that's doing the same thing. Look at it, see? Like, it's not as bad. But it's doing some vertical strokes. I don't I don't like the vertical strokes. I want horizontal and horizontal only. So I'm not I'm not actually down with that. So let's let's just take it back as far as we can. I I think this is going to do the same thing. Now, the question is, can I go there, window, brush settings? Oh, this is the brush settings screen. Look at this thing. This is out of control here. So, brush settings. Size jitter, minimum diameter, angle jitter... The angle jitter is not high, like at all. Scattering. Ah, both axis. Maybe that's what's doing it. Ooh. Yeah, maybe maybe I could try turning the scatter off. Have a little bit more control over that. See, I, I love I love the shape of this brush. I love love what it's trying to do. I'm actually okay with even leaving that, doing a little bit more of it, because I'm gonna come back over the top with some uh, grass stalks and shit like that. So yeah, let's roll with that. Yeah, brush box um, for Forge Master. He recommended it. It's only like fifteen bucks. It's actually a really good. It's a great tool. I really love it. Lanyap. Lanyap. I'm English, man, and I did explain not long ago. I'm very good, uh, very bad at pronouncing things. The re I, I got, I want to say I got in the hemisphere of it because I did live there for a while and a good. I heard it for the first time from a really good friend that I was with. Yeah, she said something along the lines of, uh, no, in fact, there was a local rag inside Lake Charles called like Lanyap. And um, I was like, what the hell is Lanyap? That's the first time I'd ever heard the word. Good old Lake Charles, Louisiana. Lot of fun memories of Lake Charles. Uh, 
That's a little heavy over there, but I'm going to leave it. Because we are going to soften that up in a moment. there for a moment thank you very much sir much appreciated uh, too heavy on them let's just throttle them back a little bit I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna darken this a spec I'm gonna make the bush a little smaller yeah I said lanyap didn't I that, that would be wrong. But it's also been, what has it been? 16 years since I've been in Louisiana? 16 years. Treebo's here. Hello. I would just like to point out that the bovines have hay. <laughs> Trebor, also, while you're listening to Congress, that particular bovine has hay too, okay? I don't want to ever see you on one of my posts go, where's the hay? Here's the hay. Did this for you. Love you, man. This literally did this for you. I've had this as a background waiting for you to turn up. All right, let's change my brush. Now I feel like I need to do themed, themed backgrounds. Treeball started it. And Princess, it's good to see you here, young lady. Good to see you here. I decided I was going to work on this map tonight because um, we'll get this panel finished and I felt that that would be a good target to do. Then we've got four panels done on this bad boy. By the way, I don't know if you saw this on one of my... Uh, it's Facebook. It was on Facebook. Stephen Chenault, the owner of Troll Lord Games, said that they, looking at these maps was bringing him to tears. He is in love with the work that we're doing here. You gotta love that, right? Mission objective, make clients cry. I'm kind of chuffed with that. He's been ecstatic about this project and what we're doing with it. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm not going to fuck about um, with these fields. I like those fields. 
And I'm okay with what we're doing here, but I'm gonna I'm gonna lighten it up a little bit more, just a little bit more, and then I'm gonna start laying down some grass on the top here. I know it's weird the way I work. For the Forge Master, make it a blacksmith crank up the heat of the house. <laughs> right. I'll be sitting there. Going, Actually, Forge Master. What do you think about Forged in Fire? Princess getting distracted by a movie? That's a good thing to get distracted by. Forge Master. It's, yeah, I'm, I'm demonetized from none of the money that I actually earned. <laughs> so, yeah. I'd probably be a little bit more cognizant about it if I had thousands of followers or something like that. I think I think the ad revenue I got, by the way, from Twitch last year, and I'm going to ballpark this, okay? I'm going to ballpark it, but I'm going to be in the hemisphere. A dollar fifty, maybe? Maybe? If Pex was here, he'd be able to confirm one way or the other. It's not a lot of money. The, the Forged in Fire, I directed at Forge Master specifically, but I mean, honestly, it, it could apply to any of you. I kind of like the show because it, it, hear me out on this, it's like a cooking show and you know that a lot of it, I don't want to say it's staged, it doesn't feel staged, but a lot of it is just, you know, it's entertainment factor. So, and I get that. Um, it's not a true artist at his bloody forge for however long it takes to create a masterwork blade, I get that. This is for TV shit. But I'm entertained by it. It's a guilty pleasure. I like watching it, you know? But I, I, I yeah, I mean, and that's as far as I could probably take that. But I was, I was interested in what Forge Master thought of it. We'll get me weak on, you'll get there. Like, getting there to $1.50 is that I think, you know. Yes, when they go home and they get to actually do their thing for a week, that I like that part. I do like that part. I think it's interesting, um, like, what some people can turn up with in, like, you know, three hours. Um, and also, conversely, what some people don't turn up with in three hours. But I love it when you get to the final two and they go home. And they've got some time with it. You know what I mean? Some of those smiths come back with works of freaking art. Now, they're not, granted, it's not like they've had a couple of weeks with it. But they come back with something that looks pretty damn good. And, like, I'm sitting there going, I don't know how you did that, but looks apart definitely definitely but conversely in the first three hours sometimes like they're turning in these hunks of metal that look like something like an orc in Lord of the Rings would be wielding it and I'm like yeah We'll give you a week, and we'll support you. You know that. It's a, it's the ones you know. It's a, it, it. I I find it fascinating too how how certain people react. You know, under pressure, it's like you've got you've got the guys that just focus. It's like I've got to get X amount done in this time. You got them. Then you've got the guys that, that conversely go, I've never done this, so I'm going to do it now in a three hour period. And they start doing these wild things that they've never done before. And it's like, why in all things human in the brain would you do that? What is it about the brain? 
that decides this is a great time for me to try this method that I've never done before. What? And there's more than a few that do that. It's like, dude, just you got three hours. Focus. Hit the bullet points. Then you always get the one that, you know, ignores the requirements and they're turning in something too long or too short, often too short. It's like, come on. And I do love watching whatever they do getting tested. I love that. I do love that. And I, cr I cringe too. Like, I cringe. I, I, I will be honest with you. I have this deep fascination for the science behind the, the, the metallurgy going on there, if that's the right word. Like, how metal reacts to heat and other metals and the things that they do with it. And the quenching in the back end. I'm like, I really, I want to understand this so much more than I do. I, I'm, I'm fascinated by that. A huge degree. Huge. Especially when it goes wrong. Especially when it goes wrong. Like, you'll see some great pieces. They look the part and they're sharp. But they can't hold the edge. And I wish I knew why they couldn't hold the edge. You know, what What would have made this different? What could they have done differently to make the edge harder? And then conversely, I'm saying conversely a lot tonight, my apologies. But then you'll get this blade and they will bash it on something. They'll bash it on something so hard and the blade holds. And I, my silly little brain really struggles with that. Like, holy crap. Like, how can a metal be so hard that it holds its edge? To that degree. I honestly, in another life, I, I could see me wanting to actually do it. To really understand it. To really understand it. And I wish that's one thing that the show did a little bit differently. Uh, and I can understand why they don't. don't. Don't get me wrong, but... It's like when something fails, like occasionally, like if a blade snaps, they'll occasionally say you created a weak point here because you did X, Y, Z. And I understand that. Like, you know, your, your, your hilt was wrong. It wasn't supporting the tang. So therefore, it snapped at the tang. I, I understand that. But other times you'll see a blade snap in the middle or it starts to like, get, you know, it's, it's folding along its edge during certain points. And I wish they would touch upon what could have been done differently to prevent that? And I, I, I want to learn, you know, I want to soak up these learning juices. I am all about soaking up shit like that. I, I like the way you're thinking, Forge Master, I'm Pabu there. Princess Strecker sharing something with me. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The, the meme about human blood. Is that what this one is? Yeah, there we go. See, this, this is where you know you've got two buddies thinking alike. This is kind of cool right here. Yeah, and I've, I, I saw one recently because we don't watch them live or anything like that. You know, we, it's Netflix or something. We're watching them on reruns. And I watched one recently snap at the Tang because his um, hilt really just wasn't, like, flush with the Tang. So there was playroom in there. And I got that. I understood why it snapped. There was one guy. Uh, they, they did one where it was, like, it was a combat knife. I think it was the uh, the Armed Forces trial of uh, verses that they did and there was one point where they had to do one of the armed forces one of their blades i think it was in the navy and it had like a serrated edge on the back of it and some of the ways that they actually did the serration actually created weak points in the blade 
that would then be prone to breaking along that edge. And it's like, okay, that's that's fascinating. I get that. I, I, I kind of understand what's going on there. Um, then there was the fantasy one where, you know, you got to create a fantasy blade. And one guy, he honestly, I mean, yeah, he was going all out. He had this curved affair, like it was bloody a Xena sh chakram type of shit going on. Um, but in creating the curve, he created a weak point, and I understood that too. I understood, okay, yeah, so that, when you hit something, this point here is going to get all of the shock, and it's going to it's gonna be prone to breaking there unless you do something about it. He didn't, and it broke. But it's the ones that create, like, this beautiful saber or something, and it snaps right in the freaking middle. And it's like, wow. It's like, what could you have done to prevent that? And maybe it's nothing. There, in fact, there was there was one where they went home. They went home to create their blades. And like after day one, a guy had his like saber type thing ready to rock and roll. And he hit like a branch just to test it out in his backyard. And it snapped. It snapped right in the middle. And it's like, so that blade was brittle. It was brittle right there. It's like, it's like thank God you did it now day one versus like on the show later on because it never would have held up but it's like how how can you possibly understand if a blade is going to do that or not and can you understand and honestly i get fascinated by so in olden times when they were creating blades for the last two thousand years how did how did our weaponsmiths know if it or did they have any control over that They've got less tools than us. How did they control that? Or did they send some blades out there with these intrinsic weaknesses in them? And did they never know? So yeah, it starts to conjure so many questions for me. They... I want to say they make blades. They only make blades. Um, a lot of the time, it's like daggers and knives, and then typically some kind of sword. I've never seen them make a spear or a war hammer or a flail, you know, or anything like that, or armor. It always seems to be some kind of blade. Princess Dragon, you got it, girl. Yeah, that Forge Master, that's, that's what I'm fascinated by, right? You know, uh, you, you... It's like you... you. I want to say you read these stories of... Or these accounts of bladesmiths across, across many centuries before us. Like, creating these incredible blades. And it... it you, you, it's hard to think that they're just doing this crapshoot, right? That they must, they, they knew their shit. They knew their shit. And so they must know if it's a good blade or not. And I'm, I'm, I am deeply, mm, I'm profoundly interested in that. Uh, quite a bit. Quite a bit. Especially because, you know, you, you'd get these blade uh, masters in, like, Japan creating these katanas. And, you know, they're doing this shit by hand. They don't have these powered presses or shit like that. And it, it that. They're not just doing this random crap shoot. They know what they're creating. They know if it's good or bad. And I'm sure there was some times where they would take something off the forge or at the forge. Or, you know, they're, they're doing their testing or whatever. And, and I'm sure that they would know if it was bad. I'm sure they would look at it and go, you know, bad, throw it away. You know? And that level of expertise, that level of knowledge, I just find deeply, deeply, uh, uh, I don't want to say attractive, but, like, mesmerizing. Mesmerizing. And I'm sure, you know, I'm sure, that, okay, you know, let's go back 2,000 years and you've got the Roman army stalking around 
and you've got, you know, freaking several thousand men to, you know, equip. And, you know, and you've got these forges across the Empire churning crap out. I'm sure, I'm sure there was a fair share of pretty bad stuff. But then there was, like, you know, you've got your officers and you've, you know, your centurions and your, your tribunes and shit with the better equipment from the better forges because they knew what they were doing. I'm sure, I'm sure there was a whole bunch of crap where, you know, they're, they're hitting, they're stabbing and crap is turning on the edges and stuff. Absolutely. I gotta light this bad boy up a little bit more. I think that's what does it for me with shows like that. It's 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 that it's that um, intellectual factor of what is going on here, you know. And the guys that know their shit, they know how to do this, this, or this. It, it's like anyone, anyone that can exercise brain power, I have great respect for. If it doesn't happen tonight, darling, don't you worry. We'll get you. Pex has been a little quiet today. I think he's had shit going on. But we're back tomorrow. Right, let's get some let's get some plant life etc on here. Let's do it. There we are, vegetation. That's the one I want. Well, Mr. Wargaming Recon. Excuse a hell out of me. He's not in the stream every night, though. He's actually been way more attentive to the streams than I've actually been expecting, to be honest with you. I'm actually gonna I'm gonna change that. Princess, we'll get you hooked up. Don't you worry about that. This is actually shaping up to be something pretty nice. I'm liking this. Yeah, I don't think it's an interface that I can... No, I, I can't do it from this interface, Princess. 
Bà ra kia học chặt Well, you know, Pex, Pex works hard He knows his stuff Um, pretty much committed to uh, keeping Pex around at least for this year. We've got some um, goals and measurements we're working against. Oh yeah, this is this is working out. This is this is definitely working out. I don't think we need to hammer on this one too much more. I'm going to soften up some of these little blobby blobbies right here. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with this. I, I'm... I'm actually okay with this. Now the question is, do I want to add some shadows on the other side of the houses? Like, you know, across the ground and everything. And I feel like I should be. So let's do it. Let's do it. And then we can call this one done. I'm going to hit save. Oh, hi, baby boy. What are you doing? Hi. You want to come here? It looks pretty good, right? It looks pretty good. I, I am thinking about um, some drop shadows, but maybe maybe we're good here. Hi, baby. What are you doing, hey? Kitty, kitty, you never say hi during the streams. What are we doing? Hello, darling. This kitty loves to get up against this monitor when the monitor is vertical. Because the monitor actually gives off a little bit of heat. And he loves to just get right there. And then because I w actually work off this monitor over here during the day and on other things. And this monitor is vertical. He can kind of get there and he lies on my arm. It's just heat all around. And he's a happy guy. But right now the monitor's flat and I'm sure the little kitty's going... Yeah, but where am I going to sit? I'm surprised he hasn't actually climbed on top of it yet. Think we're good without the drop shadows? Okay. Okay. Hi, yes, you. Yeah, no, 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 no. Hi. What are we doing? What are we doing, baby boy? Hey? Yeah, you chew that pen. It's only, it's only a whack on pen. They're not valuable at all. You just you just chill on that bad boy. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. I love you. Mm. Mm -hmm. Hello. What are we doing? So one thing I am going to do, though, is... Oh, what are you doing? What is this? What is this? Uh, he's just sitting there doing this, reaching out in the middle of the air. We are, from that little note, we're going to add smoke chimneys to these. But we'll, we'll come back to that. Not tonight. Not today. We got two black cats from the rescue ten years ago. 
He is super lovely, Dabby. It's a shame, but they hate each other. We got them together. They were sleeping together at the rescue, and they hate each other. It's a real shame. I've never had cats hate each other like this. Like, ever. All right, let, let's, you know what? what mm, time check. Yeah, we've got plenty of time. I'm going to start the next one. Uh, yeah, let's let's try this. I'm I'm kind of curious about how I'm going to approach this, so let's let's play around here a little bit. Yes, um, I'm not saying uh, I will say it. I'm not saying that um, we got them because they were black, but knowing. Knowing that shelters have a harder time with black cats, it certainly, let's just say, was an added reason to get them, you know? Especially because they were together, they were bundled up in their little cage together. We were like, well, if we, got, if we get one, we've got to get both. And here we are. And now she's at the top of the cat tree staring down at him with hatred. And I mean that, she's just sitting there looking down. Like scowling, scowling. They hate being close together. But that's because we have a theory that he, the guy that was just on camera with us, he, I think, was taken away from his mother and any potential litter too soon. I don't think he's been socialized with other cats. So he, can't, he doesn't know how to play. He plays rough. He goes in deep and hard with his claws and his biting and very early on he hurt her and she literally has missing fur chunks in the back of her neck they're just gone she has bull patches back there we came home one day and it was like oh my god what the hell and they've never got along since and it's like he could be really super loving but his loving turns into blood it just turns into blood and and, and so I, I just don't think he's ever really understood how to be gentle or just around other cats you know he's never had mom chastise him or anything so they are what they are but we love them both it's merry it's merry and it's been a while good to see you five cats for the black reason same reason now i can see that it's like you know, if I went to a cat rescue and there was one or two cats that I really loved, but I learned that the five were siblings, I'd have to, I'd have, to have to get all of them. I, I would. I would. It's good to see you, Edge. Happy New Year to you. All right, so one thing I want to mess about with here on this layer is I actually want to get a different brush where's my brushes oh I moved it over here all right I'm gonna get a different brush and we're gonna try some things we're gonna try some things with these tents that is how we're gonna end this stream tonight and we're going to grab something pretty brownie. Something pretty brownie. Leather tents, by the way, here. We start getting into the equestrian um, type tents here. Officer tents here. And certainly here. So... These certainly might end up being a different color. Otherwise, what I'm shooting for on the coloring of these tents is going to be along the lines of 
Uh, they, they, not not going to look at you. Let's let's take a look at these images here. Not red. I don't think they they wouldn't have had red like this. I'm going to save this for like the officers and shit like that. More like this. Leather or hide type of deal with the actual you know rope supports for the common legionary. I, I think there's a certain merit to having sort of just, a, 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 I, I want to call it a, a bleached white. Not not this, not yellow. This is like, this is Asterix and Obelix, so definitely not that. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking outside of the offices, like going more towards your leather stuff. If, what if I actually did? <coughs> Like this. Like this. There's our reenactment tents right there. So more like that. Lots of those. <coughs> Pen. So, a couple of ways I ever doing this. I can do this. And you know, that's probably not the end of the world, right? Or do I do something like this? I don't know, like this is kind of rushing it, but would this be would this be quicker? I, I'm not sure it would be. I am definitely rushing it, but would that be quicker if I did this this way? Maybe it would be. Maybe it would be. Or do I do them manually like this? The second one, you think the second one would be the quickest, but then do the erasing more carefully. I feel like there's something there, right? All right, let's do it the second way. Let's, let's try it the second way. Let's try it this way. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, okay, I see what you do. Okay, no, um, I'm not going to disagree. So. And you know we don't do half assed on this channel, you know that. So let me just quickly do a block, so to speak. Oops, not that. Uh, that's the one I wanted.
If this doesn't work, we lose nothing, okay? What are you doing? What are you doing? What what is this? Come on. Is that half fast? Does that look half fast? Right, the other one, I, I was rushing it as a proof of concept. But if I am gentle with the erasing in between. I think we might be able to get blocks done like this. Then imagine we'll get the nice groundwork, muddy ground, patchy grass here and there, some stone. I think we could get, like, the tents done quicker this way. <sighs> like, yeah, de definitely, definitely what I did do was half-assed, because it literally was. But with a smaller eraser like this, we can get like the tents chopped out properly. Yeah, I think this will look cute. I think this will look cute. You know what we should do? Is we should actually have like a century of guys out on the fields, like in formation or something. They would just be little dots at this resolution. But I bet we could pull it off. Maybe, maybe a century or two. You know, like 80 to 160 dots in formation. Then a collection of dots for, like, the officers. And I think, I think the human eye will equate it to guys on parade. It is a military camp. It is a Roman marching camp. This one for um, marching through hostile territory. You've got the embankments on the outside that they would set up each night. You've got their marching tents. There's no permanent structures here.
There's a um, there's a camp similar to this where they have permanent like walls and towers. But the minute you get to that, you're uh, like not moving that camp very quickly, right? So th this was purposely set up as a marching camp. And yeah, tree ball. Um, th this is like an idea I had. I we could do the individual tents or try this way, and th this way is working out okay. I think it will be quicker, even though there's a little bit of effort being spent on obviously erasing. I think the 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 general getting the colours down is is quicker. And because we're doing this digitally, we can do our colouring on top of the ground and we're not erasing anything other than the bits that we want to erase. I literally think it was last night when we were colouring the map to the left of this. I was like, you know what? I, I think we could just do a block of colour. And then erase the gaps. I think we could get away with that. And I think I think it's working. I think it's totally working. The other way of doing this would be just a colour between the tents. But I, I, I think I prefer this because we can get some gravel, mud, and grass. And colour underneath these. And it'll be a little bit more natural. I think colouring in between the colouring would be a little bit more haphazard. Now if we colour underneath this colouring. We'll be able to get away with it a little bit easier. Yeah, exactly, True Boy. It was like, I was looking at this last night and I was like, holy shit, that is a lot of tents. Now, I haven't actually counted up these tents, by the way. Eight men per tent. Have I really got a legion here? I think we're going to do that. We're go we are going to count up these tents at some point and we're going to calculate if we actually have a legion here or not. I hope we do. I hope we do. But yeah, I was thinking, well, that, my god, that's a lot of tents. If we draw or colour those individually, we're, we're going to be here for a while. Is there a quicker way? And this is the way that I wanted to experiment with, and I think it's going to work. Now, doing this, I actually feel like we could actually colour this... Maybe in one session. What do you think? You think next Monday we could get the marching camp finished? You think it's going to be Monday, Tuesday? Bearing in mind that the ground always takes me longer to do than you think it should. Mash units might be four, Romans were eight. Contabernium, I might be mispronouncing that. Contabernium, Contabernium, something like that. Eight men, that was a small unit. Eight guys living together, cooking together, sleeping together. You take 10 of those, you put them together, you got a sentry. 80 dudes. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Look at that. So there is a sentry. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There's a cohort. 6, 6. Might be more than 6, huh? Yeah, I'll have to rack my brain. 
I think we might be pretty close to being on point with this. I'm just varying up some of the tent colours a little bit. So it feels a little less regular. Yeah, actually, I agree with you, Trevor. If we move at this rate, yeah, I think we could be sitting pretty here. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five. We might have a couple of legions in here. I'm going to use that to our advantage right now. And by the way, I'm just dicking about at the moment. Doing a kind of a proof of concept. Oh, I can't do that layer. I can't do that layer. Hold on. Yeah, because of the way that I did the first layer. We're going to be ending the stream here shortly. I think we're just going to sort of take this to have our kind of proof of concept a little bit more solidified.
yeah I, I think I think this will work. We're going to build up the ground, much like this stuff over here. I think this will work. There we go. I think this is a good point to end this. So, where are we? We're on Wednesday. I'm going to come back tomorrow. But I think from now on, Wednesdays, Thursdays, I think we're going to... I think we're going to work on Necropolis for Frog God Games. I'm definitely going to be doing Necropolis over the weekends. Getting in as many hours as possible. I might stream those. Depending what else is going on. But tomorrow, I think we will jump in to Necropolis. We're going to work on that map a little bit. Now, the map is getting huge. Hopefully, that won't affect the streaming performance. We'll, we'll see. We've got to play it by ear, right? So, I think this is a great point to end the stream for tonight. We are going to be back tomorrow. I want to thank everyone for hanging out with me tonight. Huge amount of love to you. For all of you Twitch subscribers, for you Patreon backers... <laughs> thank you just thank you for being so supportive you people are absolutely awesome human beings i love hanging out with you love hanging out with you on discord and right here so tomorrow we'll be back different project altogether more dungeon style way more dungeon style i can't wait to show you what i've been working on off camera i think you're gonna like it i think you're gonna like how it is shaping up so until then, everyone have a fantastic evening, and I will see you all on the flip side. Everyone have a wonderful night. See you tomorrow.